Hello, everyone. I'm Maureen O'Boyle, and this is Extra. The white man marches on. It's a disturbing story of bigotry and hatred. But for one man, American History X is more than a controversial new movie. He lived it. I think that people should take their kids definitely to see this movie. It's a good way to talk to your kids about hatred and bigotry. Tonight, Phil Schumann is with a real-life former skinhead. Why he transformed himself from tattooed racist to ambassador of tolerance. Her American dream was shattered in a hail of bullets. First, she lost the man she loved. Then, the government fired a shot at her citizenship. I didn't do anything wrong in this country. And as a victim, I shouldn't, you know, deported from America. Now, the outcome of Jasmine's fight to stay in the country she loves. Ouija boards, candles, and a full moon. It's Halloween, and for this woman, it's the holiest night of the year. She's a witch. When you say that word, people immediately think of uh, hideous hags, even the green-faced evil witch with a wart on her nose. Plus, extra, extra. it's Halloween in Hollywood. I'm going to be the bride of Frankenstein. The smoldering men of the L.A. Fire Squad. And party with the worm at the world's wildest masquerade ball. This is the weekend edition of Extra. Now, here's Maureen O'Boyle. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you're enjoying this Halloween weekend. It is a disturbing story of hate, bigotry, and violence. The controversial new film, American History X. While the subject of neo-Nazi skinheads is offensive to most people, for one man, the movie's plot line hits close to home. And he's hoping its message prevents others from repeating his mistakes. Phil Schumann reports. Images of anger. Symbols of hatred. Ow! Words of division. The white man marches on! This is the provocative new film, American History X. The story of one man's attempt to repair the wounds he caused by living a life as a neo-Nazi skinhead racist. Has anything you've done made your life better? It's an excellent film. It's probably the most realistic portrayal of a skinhead lifestyle today. Tom Layden says in many ways this new film parallels his own life. For some 15 years, he was a white supremacist. Dozens of tattoos once covered his body. Some have now faded with the help of laser surgery, but many, like these swastikas and this SS soldier, remain. You can always turn it around. You just, the person's got to want to do that. Three years ago, Tom Layden did turn his life around. In my case, I got out. Basically, I wanted to save my children from the horror that the racist movement was causing. Tom's now determined to make sure that his two young sons, that other children, won't follow the same path of hatred he once did. And he thinks American History X can help. Just help me. I think it's an important movie. I think that people should take their kids definitely to see this movie. What would you say to the kids? Yeah. Talk to them, say, have you been exposed to this kind of racism? Have you seen these kind of people on your campus? Uh, and if so, then start talking to your kids about what's, what's the negative aspects about it, what not to do. Anything that made you different, we would attack. As a consultant to L.A.'s famed Simon Wiesenthal Center and Museum of Tolerance, Tom tells his story to law enforcement groups, to students, to anyone who listened. So I started actively recruiting kids from the age of 12 years old and older to join the white power movement. And Tom says white power groups went to schools looking for new members. Now, he says, the Internet is perhaps the biggest recruiting tool with hundreds of websites devoted to white supremacy. Tom warns that parents need to be especially vigilant. If your kid was hanging out on a street corner talking with some guy in a Klan outfit, you definitely want to hear what the guy was talking about. But your kid goes on the Internet because you don't see the guy in the sheet, it's okay. Now, are we making progress in this battle against racism, or are we going forward or backwards? I think we're, we're not losing the battle, that's for sure, but I don't think we're doing enough to try to win. Why not? Because I don't think we're doing enough as far as the education of our children. But change is possible. Ed Norton's character did it in American History X. So did Tom Layden. We've got to learn to coexist in this world because nobody's going nowhere. You know, we're all going to be here. We're nobody's, no, no race of people is going to die out tomorrow. So you got to just learn to coexist. American History X opens around the country this weekend. She was married less than a year when her husband was killed in an armed robbery. Then Jasmine Salehi faced being deported from the country she loves. 
That's when some influential people stepped in to help her seek justice. And as David Jackson reports, this soft-spoken woman inspired extraordinary action. It was a joyful and warm moment. Jasmine Salehi thanking Congressman Brad Sherman from the bottom of her heart for making her American dream come true. Sherman pushed through legislation that lets the South Korean native remain in this country. How many people have an act of Congress just for them? But that's exactly what it took. Jasmine's story is one of compassion and justice in the face of crime and tragedy. Your case is so compelling. The tale begins in 1993 when Jasmine came to Los Angeles from Seoul, South Korea to visit her sister. She met Cyrus Salehi during brunch at a Denny's restaurant. The two fell in love and married in 1995. You are in love, you don't know what's going on, you just kind of uh, sit on crowd nine. Jasmine settled down happily in her adopted country with her new husband, an Iranian-born, naturalized American. He's funny, and he's very nice and sweet. But less than a year later, her dream was shattered. It was all over the news. Two armed robbers walked into this Denny's where Cyrus was managing the night shift. They took $400, then shot him to death. I had a big hole in my heart. Can replace of him at all. But her nightmare only got worse. The young mourning widow soon discovered she was about to be deported. That's because Jasmine had been married to American citizen Cyrus for only 11 months. Under the law, they had to be married for two years before she could qualify for permanent resident status. I didn't do anything wrong in this country. And as a victim, I shouldn't, you know, deported from America. Ralph Myers agreed. He met Jasmine at a grief support group, which he attended after his own son had been murdered. Ralph was furious when he found out about Jasmine's plight. There was no compassion for her, no exception to the rule. After discovering that an exception to the rule would require congressional legislation, Ralph took Jasmine's case right to Senator Dianne Feinstein of California and Representative Brad Sherman. For us to be a just country, the Congress occasionally has to pass a special law because sometimes the general laws aren't just as they're applied to a particular circumstance. So while Feinstein and Sherman tried to persuade their colleagues about the merits of Jasmine's case, she remained in limbo. Yes, it was touch and go to the very end. While the House had passed Jasmine's bill earlier, the Senate literally waited to the last second, approving it just minutes before adjourning for the year. Jasmine got the word in phone calls from Sherman and Feinstein. This is The good news also came with a memento she'll treasure for life. This copy of the congressional bill approved just for her, her wedding picture and name on the cover. And while relief over her status has not eased Jasmine's loss, she hopes that she can finally begin a new life in the land her late husband loved so much. I feel comfortable here, and I have family here, friends here. Well, Jasmine will be eligible for U.S. citizenship in five years. Meanwhile, she's working to find a job. Prince Charles has been working hard at keeping his romance with Camilla Parker Bowles discreet, but it seems the couple slipped up in public recently. Gina Silva has that scoop, plus how the stars are celebrating Halloween in Hollywood in this weekend's Extra Extra. A turning point. Though Prince Charles and his love Camilla Parker Bowles arrived separately for this fancy London wedding Thursday, Extra Extra has learned they hooked up at the reception and shared some bubbly. They acted like an old married couple. Extra Extra's Royals expert Elaine Lipworth says it may be a step towards a more public relationship. It's the first time they've made a joint appearance. And guess what? They sneaked out of the back door together. <laughs> Trick or treat. Yo, what's up, Extra? Happy Halloween. Thanks, Coolio. Extra, extra cut up with the stars at the Carousel of Hope Ball, where the celebs were dressed in their fanciest finery, but we wanted to know what they'd be wearing for Halloween. I'm going to be the bride of Frankenstein. My husband's Frankenstein. Hey, Jane Seymour, guess how the bride of Chucky, Jennifer Tilly, will spend this 
spooky evening. I think I'll probably Halloween, stay at home with my boyfriend, watch a scary movie on TV, perhaps have some microwave popcorn. <laughs> and we understand Lost in Space mom Mimi Rogers may be trying to scare up a pair of glass slippers. My daughter's going to be Cinderella, and I'll just be uh, tagging along. And it looks like Jenny McCarthy came dressed in a costume. As what? We have no clue, and neither does she. I have no idea <laughs> what's going on with this look. You wanted more? You just got. Coming up next, by day she's a high-powered attorney, but when the moon comes out, this woman says she has other kinds of powers. Witches do cast spells. The practical magic of a real-life witch. Also, it was her terrible secret. I had a fascination towards blood. And his private pain. I basically um, would um, pick or scratch at my face. From out of the shadows, why they purposely inflicted pain on themselves. Plus, they spend their time putting out fires. Now, these hunks are setting hearts afire. Extra will be right back. Now, Gone with the Wind can be yours on video. Bring home the passion. You should be kissed and off by someone who knows how. And the desire. Despite the whole silly world going to pieces around us, I love you. Of the screen's most enduring love story. Kiss me once. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. God is my witness. I'll never be hungry again. Add the greatest romance of all time to your collection. Gone with the Wind. Now for sale on video at its lowest price ever. Whitman's introduces Snoopy treats, new snack-sized candy bars, peanuts and caramel, or granola and caramel, covered with milk and chocolate, wrapped in peanuts characters. Get Whitman's Snoopy treats. Taste like fun. It's no secret why Jibbenine sausage tastes great. Authentic, whole ground spices, not oils or extracts, and it's a taste that you can only get with Jimmy Dean. Only the best. That's the Jimmy Dean way. It's an extra November, hard-hitting investigation, what you gonna do? dramatic stories, new features. At some drugstores, they seem to think people only get sick between 9 and 5. At Osco, we know better. When most everybody else is closed, there's an Osco pharmacy near you that's open all day. All night, all year. At Osco, you can count on people who care. Taxes, real issue. In Indiana, real differences. Paul Helmke, as mayor of Fort Wayne, he raised taxes 11 times. He even gave Fort Wayne two new income taxes, a 43% increase in taxes and utility costs. Evan Bayh, as governor, gave Indiana the largest tax cut in state history. As senator, Bayh wants to eliminate the marriage penalty and inheritance tax. Give tax credits for child and elder care. Lower taxes, the choice is clear. Evan Bayh, Hoosier Values in Washington. With the twitch of her nose, Elizabeth Montgomery brought magic to millions as Samantha, TV's favorite witch. And today, that bewitching tradition is being continued by three young women on TV's Charmed. But this Halloween weekend, one woman wants to change the way people envision witches. As Les Trent reports, she doesn't exactly practice hocus pocus, but she can cast a spell over a jury. Witches and Ouija boards, candles and full moons. But the spooky images that surround the practice of witchcraft are not what witches are all about. When you say that word, people immediately think of uh, hideous hags, you know, the green-faced evil witch with a wart on her nose. But witchcraft actually has nothing to do with the stereotypes. And Phyllis Curot certainly breaks the stereotype of a witch. By day, she's a high-powered Manhattan attorney. But when the moon rises... She transforms herself into a witch, or Wiccan High Priestess, to be precise. The word witch comes from an old Anglo-Saxon word, which it meant a wise one. It was uh, somebody who had learned to take off uh, the blindfold and to see the world as holy. Holy in every way. The passing seasons revered, spirits worshipped. 
Each rite of passage, a ritual. This is the time to remember the ancient one. Phyllis is just one of 60,000 Wiccan practitioners in the United States today. They worship by casting a circle and drawing up energy in order to live a life inspired by their goddess, a female deity. We've grown up in Western culture with images of the divine that are strictly male and um, with un very unfortunate attitudes towards women. Salt and water. But Phyllis says don't be afraid a witch's spell isn't a curse. Witches do cast spells, but never to have control over anyone except themselves. And it's usually for a purpose like healing or love or prosperity or wisdom or to help someone. And much like in the movies, Phyllis says witches do practice magic by the light of the moon. We sing and we dance and we do something called journeying, which is kind of an altered state of consciousness. She claims she cast a spell to find a husband. And Bruce Fields, whom she married in 1996, says it worked. Our life is filled all the time with, uh, with magic and wonder because it's there. We just, we just make a point of being um, open to it. Bruce is now also a witch. And the couple says that ancient tradition helps them cope with the stresses of modern life. These ancient shamanic techniques that we use um, enable you to find the wisdom to learn from each of the challenges that life presents you with and to become stronger. While most people are out trick-or-treating this weekend, Phyllis says she'll be gathered in a circle with other witches sharing stories about loved ones who've passed away. Coming up next, he's the star of What Dreams May Come. Now see how Robin Williams made a little boy's real-life dream come true. Man, you did good. Thank you. Thank you. Chaos at a Motley Crew concert. Only it's not the crowd that gets things out of control. He kept saying, there are more of you than there are of him. And he said it again, you know, kick his butt, kick his butt. Now the rock and roll bad boys have some explaining to do. He called him a Plus, time was running out for little Christopher. Be there when he meets the stranger who saved his life. I want him to give him a hug. When Extra continues... Oklahoma City could happen anywhere. We live in a time where tragic violence is unpredictable. The one thing you can count on in Marion County is Prosecutor Scott Newman. He's one of the best in the country, with more cases tried and more cases won than ever before. Convictions and homicide trials are up 15%. Don't believe for a second that Scott is not doing his job. I've worked side by side with him, and no other prosecutor can serve us better. Keep Adam Newman. At the State Board of Finance, there are three chairs, governor, treasurer, auditor. Connie Noss knows how important each one is. The board approves dollars for communities, schools, and roads. I want to be your voice in that debate to ensure our surplus is not wasted and that wise investments are made in our future. You have every right to make sure that your voice is heard. Vote Republican Connie Noss for State Auditor. Your voice at the table. Web TV is so easy, anyone can use it. Let's say you're an awards judge for daytime television. With Web TV, you can look up a website and watch television at the same time. And since you're so busy with your judging duties, Web TV can even remind you to watch a show. Like this one. Not that you're forgetful or anything. Web TV service. The internet, television, and more. It's a great age to join a rescue team. It's a great age to race to the scene. It's a great age for something extreme. It's a great age for Fisher Price. It's a great age for a rescue mission. It's a great age for going Fisher. The Rescue Heroes, a team of heroic figures and a quick response vehicle for split-second rescues. Finally, your kid will be rooting for the good guys. It's a great age for Fisher Price. Oh, ticket, sir? I just need to tell my cousin that 1-800 collects 10 cents a minute every evening. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa! I forgot to tell you, when you call me, use 1-800-COLLECT. What else would I use? 1-800-COLLECT. 10 cents a minute every evening. Whitman's introduces Snoopy treats, new snack-sized candy bars, peanuts and caramel, or granola and caramel.
covered with milk chocolate. <laughs> Wrapped in peanuts characters. Get Whitman Snoopy treats. Taste like fun. Here's this weekend's extra flashback. November 4th, 1979. Revolutionaries stormed the U.S. Embassy in Iran, taking 63 American hostages. The captors demanded that the former Shah, who had fled the country, return from the United States to stand trial. Although some were released, 52 hostages were held 444 days. They were finally released on January 20th, 1981, President Reagan's inauguration day. And that's this weekend's extra flashback. His movie, What Dreams May Come, is a hit at the box office. And if you ask one young man, Robin Williams can also make real-life dreams come true. Rick Schwartz explains. Thank you. Oh, man, you did good. Thank you. It's a moment Rudy Garcia Tolson won't soon forget, nor will his teammate Robin Williams. That's because today, Rudy realized a dream. Rudy's a competitor, man. He's training. He's been doing 5,000 yards a night. I can't even do 200. I've been actually attacked by Norwegian sealers when I get in the water. Extra caught up with Rudy and Robin just before beginning the race of Rudy's lifetime. How you been, buddy? What's my name? Mr. Rick. Mr. Rick. <laughs> you remember Mr. Rick's salon? <laughs> Come down to Mr. Rick's for incredible... He does the whole moosing, styling. Mr. Rick, <laughs> also in Casablanca. This year, Rudy's getting his first shot at the San Diego Triathlon Challenge, a competition for the physically challenged. Rudy will swim, Robin will pedal, and triathlete Scott Tinley will run. Rudy is racing to win and prove a point. If people say you can't do it, just try it. If, and, and, and if they say you can't do it and you do it, you proved them wrong. And Rudy's proven a lot of people wrong in his 10 years. Extra first told you about this amazing boy last year. Rudy was born with a very rare congenital disease called pterygium syndrome, which left his legs, face, and mouth deformed. Rudy endured 15 surgical procedures to ease his suffering. Then in 1993, the tough tyke lost his legs to the disease, but that didn't stop him from pursuing his passion, swimming. Rudy began an intense training program with one goal in mind, competing in a triathlon. Come on, Rudy! Today, Rudy is realizing the fruits of his long hours of training. He makes it to shore and is carried up the stairs, then tears across the lawn to tag his pal Robin for the bike race. Robin and Rudy met last year at a triathlon in Malibu, and ever since, the two have been pals. What advice did you give Robin this morning? Don't fall off. Don't fall off the bike? I told him that and he said, well, I'll try not to. Staying upright, Robin is slicing the wind in his red and green biker gear. He'll be cycling almost 60 miles on this day before he meets Rudy at the finish line, which gives Rudy and me a chance to talk man to man. You know, Rudy, when you become a really big star like you're becoming now, all the girls are going to come after you. Uh, oh. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't want anyone to talk to me. Really? Do you want a girlfriend? No. No girlfriend? No. Do you like girls? No. Not yet? No. You think you will one day? No. Now, after three grueling hours, Robin is wheeling his way home. <laughs> and gets a big greeting from his good buddy. Hey, Ruth. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, man. That was fun. Thanks. Reunited after all the hard work, Robin tells us why Rudy is an inspiration. He's power incarnate. He's a superhero, you know? It's like, there's so many people here today that fit the same bill, but, you know? Rudy's got the power, you know. And though the day was ending, Rudy wasn't about to let Robin get away scot-free. Talk to me in weird um, voices. Weird voices? You could talk as anyone you want. I could be here as Jack Nicholson. Maybe Jack will be on the team next year. Or maybe just have Mel for the real team brave out. Stunningly brilliant! Whee! Truly amazing. Rudy has already set his sights on the Los Angeles Triathlon, which takes place next spring. But this time, he'll swim, bike, and run all by himself. If anybody can do it, I know you can, Rudy. Good luck to you. Well, this weekend, there are lots of Halloween parties going on. But if you're looking for wild, few hold a candle to the one we're about to show you. Scott Rappaport takes us to a very bizarre party in Extra's Video of the Week. Wild Outfits. I'm hot, you're hot, we're all hot. Exotic dancers, pyrotechnics, and skin, skin, skin. How many Halloween parties have this? 
plus a guest list that includes Dennis Rodman, Grace Jones, and Stuttering John from The Howard Stern Show. And uh, I'm here having a good time. There's a lot of wackos here. Yeah! It's the 19th annual Exotic Erotic Ball in San Francisco. An unusual costume party where instead of dressing up, most of the guests dress down. A bunch of naked bodies, just having fun. <laughs> That's an understatement. The adults-only event was sold out with a crowd of 15,000. Not exactly intimate, but this bride and groom thought it was the perfect place to tie the knot. And they fit right in. How'd you like to have this play your wedding? Entertainer Grace Jones wowed the scantily clad crowd, but her head seemed to be elsewhere. What's exotic and erotic? Oh, trees, flowers, nature, beautiful nature. Uh, yeah. And that's Extra's Video of the Week. Still ahead, he's baseball's super slugger, but Sammy Sosa hasn't forgotten his humble roots. And no matter how low or how high you are, you, you never have to forget where you're coming from. From shoeshine boy to shining star, extras with a hero as he revisits his homeland. Plus, if you thought fires were hot, check out the guys who fight them. I made the month of February. The smoking men of the L.A. Fire Department coming up. In the fast-moving world of the Internet, one provider stands out. One Internet provider offers the highest speeds available, fiber-optic connections, direct links to the Internet backbone. One Internet provider has full 24-hour tech support, serves more Indiana communities, has more dial-up phone lines and more direct connections than any other. In Indiana, only IndyNet can give you all this. Put the full power of the Internet in your hand with IndyNet. Unworthy and not true. It's an old political trick. Take one line completely out of context and hire an announcer with a really scary voice. Hi, I'm Sue Ann Gilroy, and unlike my Democrat friends there, I speak for myself. I've crisscrossed the state talking about better schools and lower taxes. I've been tough on the governor, but never untruthful or unfair. And I'm going to keep on being tough, because when principles are at stake, you can't be afraid to stand up for what you believe in. Monday at 6 on Eyewitness News. How many times do you get stuck behind a school bus each day? Too many to count? Stop. Now ask yourself, how many times have you seen this? Drivers blowing by a school bus when the stop arm comes out. Putting children, maybe yours, in danger. Maybe they just not paying attention. Just driving and not paying attention. Think you know the law? Play it safe. Watch John Stairs' eye-opening report on school bus safety. Monday at 6 on Eyewitness News. Taxes, real issue. In Indiana, real differences. Paul Helmke, as mayor of Fort Wayne, he raised taxes 11 times. He even gave Fort Wayne two new income taxes, a 43% increase in taxes and utility costs. Evan Bayh, as governor, gave Indiana the largest tax cut in state history. As senator, Bayh wants to eliminate the marriage penalty and inheritance tax, give tax credits for child and elder care. Lower taxes, the choice is clear. Evan Bayh, Hoosier Values in Washington. A heavy metal concert out of control. In the middle of the melee, a security guard attacked as Motley Crue eggs on an angry crowd. I was in total shock. I did not believe that this was actually happening to me. Are the rockers racists? I could be ignorant. They were the rarest of twins, conjoined at the pelvis. Now, two weeks after their risky separation, how little Michaela and Gabrielle are doing as two, plus extras heating up with L.A.'s hunky firefighters. This is the weekend edition of Extra. Once again, here's Marino Boyle. Welcome back. Rock concerts are known for being rowdy, but usually it's the crowd, not the band, that gets out of control. But one man says he was attacked during a Motley Crue concert. He is now suing the heavy metal band, saying the group incited the melee. Bill Schumann shows us what he says is his evidence in this extra exclusive. It was one man against one angry mob. Watch as a panicked security guard tries to escape a crazed Motley Crue crowd. 
He showered with beer as he makes a run for safety through a sea of wild, screaming fans. At that point in time, I, I was in total shock. I did not believe that this was actually happening to me. John Allen was hired to help protect the band during a concert in Greensboro, North Carolina. Allen had no idea that he'd be the one who needed protection. Protection from a hard-driving band with hard-charging fans. The lights were hot, the music loud, the frenzy of people surged closer to the stage. That's when Allen took a risk and kicked out a rowdy fan. But look what happens next as bass player Nikki Six flies into a rage. You know why? Because this security ass in the front are punching you, motherfuckers. And you guys deserve better than that. Allen says he was splattered with beer by Tommy Lee and spit from Six. Then you see him trapped in the crowd, desperately trying to get away as Six keeps up the war cry. He uh, told them to come kick my butt, you know, and he kept saying, there are more of you than there are of him. And he said it again, you know, kick his butt, kick his butt. responds by running to the side, then shakes his hand defiantly, trying to make Six and the crowd stop. Allen clings to a giant speaker before escaping out a back door. As he left, Allen claims Six yelled racial slurs. I asked Six about that during a recent interview. He was a black security guard, and I called him a Six admits using the N-word was a mistake, but he doesn't apologize for confronting Allen, who Six claims was abusing Motley Crue's fans. I was so irate of how he was treating someone. The mistake was that I did that in front of 15,000 people, and I showed 15,000 people that I, I could be ignorant. But this is not an isolated incident. Last year in Phoenix, Lee and Six were arrested, accused of assaulting a security guard there and rallying fans into a near riot. And we all know about Tommy Lee. His battles with estranged wife Pamela Anderson landed him in jail. He's since had counseling. So if that happened today, now that you have the uh, benefit of your anger management classes and so forth, uh, he could coach me. Would would that happen? <laughs> Bro, I mean, we gotta talk. We gotta hold on. Stop the concert. <laughs> but Alan wasn't laughing as he relived that night with extra through the videotape. The pictures still make him sick. Nikki Six and Tom. That's Tommy Lee spitting on me. In a federal lawsuit, Alan's seeking more than a half million dollars for what he calls abuse he didn't deserve. I would like justice to be served in this case. Tommy Lee and Nikki Six have been summoned to appear before a North Carolina judge by November 16th. At that time, a trial date will be set. Here's an extra update. For close to a year, Extra's been following the story of Michaela and Gabrielle Garcia, the little girls born conjoined at the pelvis. We were there two weeks ago when their mother, Karen Crow, said a tearful goodbye, handing her babies off to doctors at California's Loma Linda University Medical Center for a risky 12-hour surgical separation. Karen had no idea if she'd ever see them alive again. They're so strong that they're going to bounce right back. Karen was right. The surgery was a success. Each girl now has her own stomach, liver, kidney, and small intestine. And we're happy to report that earlier this week, the tiny sisters were taken off respirators and upgraded to fair condition. They'll remain in intensive care until doctors think it's safe to send them home. And that's an extra update. He may be one of baseball's heaviest hitters, but Sammy Sosa hasn't forgotten where he comes from. If you think he's a hero in this country, wait until you see the welcome Sosa gets in his native Dominican Republic. Gina Silva witnessed it firsthand when she went home with the super slugger. Here in the Dominican Republic, people learn at a young age that when you live in desperate poverty like this, dreams almost never come true. But now, one of their own, Sammy, Sammy lo quiero. the great Sammy Sosa is changing that mentality and proving to the world that no matter what your background, if you work hard, you can achieve anything. <laughs> Even the incredible feat of 66 home runs in one season. Do you think you've exceeded your dreams? I'm away was dreaming that um, I can play, I can go out and do anything that I want, but not to go this far. Um, the reason that I've been this far is because 
People in America supporting me, people over the world. And nowhere is that more evident than in the Dominican Republic, especially in the small town of San Pedro de Macorís, where Sammy is from. Last week, when he returned home, the president declared a day of national celebration. When you came back home, what was it like to see everybody there? People in America showed me their appreciation, but nothing like home. When I came back here, uh, Tuesday was something that I had to say that was unbelievable. Um, you know, I was crying. Despite his incredible success and new wealth, Sammy Sosa remains humble and as grounded as ever. In fact, he makes it a point to never forget what it was like to grow up poor here in San Pedro de Macorís. To never forget that before he became Sammy Sosa, the great baseball player, he spent his days much like these guys, shining shoes for approximately two pesos a pair. Two pesos a pair, that's about 19 cents. I remember those days when uh, <clears throat> we don't have an opportunity, nothing to uh, survive. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, have a tough time to uh, try to take and make money, trying to take care of my family. But no longer. Since being discovered by a scout 13 years ago, he's batted his way into the big leagues. And now, at the age of 29, he has a four-year contract of $42.5 million, plus big buck endorsements like... Somebody say me Danos? Money is no longer a problem, and he's proving that by his generosity. In his hometown, he's known as Sammy Claus. He's bought ambulances for better medical services. He's built a baseball school for kids interested in the game. And just recently, when his country was devastated by Hurricane George, Sammy was once again sending food, clothes, and money to his people. Why is it important for you to come out and help so many people? Because I'm here for a reason, and this is my reason, this is my destination, this is what God brought me here. You know, and I believe in that. So I, I, I think that uh, as a human being, as a person, and no matter how low or how high you are, you, you never have to forget where you're coming from. So you know? what is next for Sammy Sosa? Go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> you're not planning on dying, are you? No. When it is the time, time to go, I want to go to heaven. I know how my play up there. And, uh, I want people that remember me, that's it. Remember me the way that I am, the way that I, the good person. To date, Sosa's foundation has raised nearly $300,000 in relief money for the Dominican Republic. Every year, thousands of people die waiting for a bone marrow transplant. The McCurley family of Lubbock, Texas, had to face that daunting reality not once, but twice. Their two sons needed transplants, and there was an additional obstacle in their way. Les Trent now with the tragic beginning and bittersweet end of a family's ordeal. Christopher and Derek McCurley, two brothers at play. What could be more innocent or fun? But for these seemingly happy, healthy little boys, one fall like this All right. could be deadly. Christopher and Derek were born with Wiscott Aldridge syndrome, a rare and usually fatal disorder which keeps the blood from clotting. That means a simple fall could lead to internal hemorrhaging and even death. We couldn't believe that it happened to our family, so it was a really a devastating blow. After learning the sad news that both their sons suffered from the deadly disorder, Harry and Nikki McCurley set out to find ways to save them. The only possible cure, a bone marrow transplant. But for three-year-old Christopher and his one-year-old brother, time was running out. The success rate of a bone marrow transplant with Westcott Alder syndrome goes down to 20% after the age of five. The older you get, the tougher it is to have a bone marrow transplant. But since both boys were very young, the McCurleys had no doubt that they would make the deadline. My thoughts were that, okay, you get in the registry, next couple of days there will be a donor. But it wouldn't be that easy. Because they're biracial, the McCurley brothers had a better chance of matching with a minority donor. However, minorities only make up 25% of the national donor list. The odds aren't good. They say it's like a one in a million chance to find a donor um, that's going to match your DNA typing. It's so rare and hard to find. As the years passed, the McCurleys began to worry. I got very scared and I started panicking, thinking, oh my gosh, if we don't find him a donor, what are we going to do? But just when all their hope is gone, a match is found for Christopher, who by now is four years old. The answered prayer comes from thousands of miles away, Connecticut, where this man, Emmanuel Rossi, a 23-year-old Puerto Rican, initially signed up to help a distant cousin with leukemia. My older brother 
told me not to do it because something might happen. So, you know, you never know. But my sister said that he was silly not to listen to him because it was going to be for a four-year-old. And she told me, put him, yourself in their position. And when he did, Emmanuel decided to go through with it. The procedure was relatively painless. A needle was inserted, the marrow extracted. And on November 14, 1996, Christopher received his transplant. Shortly after that, Christopher began to improve. It was then that Derek took a turn for the worse. Emmanuel was not a match for him, and tragically, none would be found in time. I at no time thought that Derek would make it. I didn't think that until the day he passed away. Derek died February 21st, 1998. Eight months later, the family is still grieving Derek's death, but at the same time, they are celebrating Christopher's newfound life. He's just a normal kid now, and that's all I want him to be from now on. I'm just full of joy. I'm full of joy in my heart. And the McCurleys owe their joy to Emmanuel, a man they've never met but feel emotionally tied to forever. I think he really loves me and stuff, and I think he likes me. When Extra heard their story, we decided to bring the McCurleys and Emmanuel together for the first time. I'm nervous, but um, I want to I wanna meet him, and I want to see him. We flew Emmanuel from Connecticut and brought him to the McCurley's home in Lubbock, Texas. Hey, Emmanuel. How you doing, buddy? Thank you, buddy. Thank you for saving that little boy's life, okay? Thank you very much. Thanks, Emmanuel. Thanks for the gift of life you gave me, Mr. I want any gift, It was a powerful moment. Words could barely convey the McCurley's overwhelming feelings of gratitude. And we want you to know that, that we love you for what you've done, man. We really do from all our all our family and our friends and the neighbors here and all our community feels the same way that Everybody we do. Everybody loves so, you, Emmanuel. Yeah. And it was something Emmanuel would do again in an instant. And now having met Christopher, Emmanuel realizes firsthand the true value of his gift. When you can help somebody and give that person a chance to live again is the best feeling that you get. That's the best reward you get. Thank you for my bummer. And thank you for being here. You can read more about the McCurley story in the October issue of Family Circle magazine. Straight ahead, Johnny Depp did it. So did Roseanne, Princess Diana, and this man. It was a way to relieve my anxiety. Cutting, scratching, and burning their own skin. When you look at your scars now, is it tough for you? Gina Silva with the secret shame of self-mutilation. And later, they're firefighters by profession. But now you can enjoy their smoldering looks all year long. Extra returns in a moment. There are some tremendously gifted fruit out there. Ocean Spray Fruit Audition. Take six. And cut. And then there are the ones with issues. It's my size, isn't it? The problem fruit. I don't think you're quite the type we're looking for. Sorry. Oh, that? I photographed tall. Introducing new Ocean Spray 100% juice blends. Average cranberries need not apply. Many come, fewer chosen. It's always about size with you people. Thank you. I'm plenty tall. Thank you. You guys are so picky, picky, picky. Next. New 100% juice blends from Ocean Spray. We only pick the best fruit. Oh, ticket, sir? I just need to tell my cousin that 1-800 collects 10 cents a minute every evening. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa! I forgot to tell you, when you call me, use 1-800-COLLECT. What else would I use? 1-800-COLLECT. 10 cents a minute every evening. Whitman's introduces Snoopy treats. New snack-sized candy bars. Peanuts and caramel or granola and caramel. Covered with milk and chocolate. <laughs> Wrapped in peanuts characters. Get Whitman's Snoopy treats. Taste like fun. Guess what? I love to play finders keepers. I find the right shampoo, I keep my color. Thanks to Color Vive Shampoo by L'Oreal. Now here comes the science bit. Concentrate. Color Vive is formulated with a UV filter to protect and revitalize every strand. That's why my color stays truer, longer, my hair healthier. With Color Vive by L'Oreal. And I'm worth it. beautiful when I sing her little song and she dances. Ryder's jeans are made to fit beautiful women. I am beautiful when he, he sees me as the person that he married. 
Ryder's jeans are made to fit beautiful women. Johnny Depp admitted he suffered from it, so did Roseanne and Princess Diana. It's a disorder known as self-mutilation, people hurting themselves as a way to cope with emotional pain. Gina Silva spoke with self-injurers on the road to healing for this extra special report. I basically um, would um, pick or scratch at my face. A lot of mine was cutting and burning, and um, I had a fascination towards blood. You are listening to the confessions of self-mutilators or cutters, people who intentionally cut, scratch, and burn themselves as a way to deal with the overwhelming emotional pain they hold inside. It was a way to relieve my anxiety. 20-year-old Matt Tapia is a self-mutilator. The marks you see on his face were not caused by acne. Matt himself made the disfiguring scars by scratching his face over and over and over again. It was his way of dealing with his parents' divorce. Because he couldn't express his emotions to his mother and father, he took out his anger on himself, scratching until the blood flowed. It wasn't necessarily the bleeding that I needed, but just the pieces of skin. That's what satisfied me. when I knew that I'd done what I wanted to do, when I could look down and see pieces of my skin on my fingers. When you look at your scars now, is it tough for you? It's, it's just terrible um, for me to look at it. If I have to shave or cut my hair, I'll usually take my glasses off. Um, that way I can't see as clear. It's hard to imagine that cutting, burning, or scratching your own body could make you feel better. But that's exactly what self-mutilators claim. That physical pain numbs their intense emotional pain. And for some, seeing blood actually makes them feel alive. I just took a razor and sliced it. Kelly Trock sliced up her entire arm, trying to make her pain and loneliness go away. I was never really well liked, so I took a lot of what people told me too deeply, and their words would hurt me. But if I injured, it pushed all that away. By Kelly, most self-injurers are abused and are trying to take control of their own pain. They're making the outside look like the inside feels, is what I often hear. Dr. Wendy Later and Karen Contario are the directors of SAFE. Self-abuse finally ends. In 1985, they opened the first inpatient facility dedicated wholly to cutters. And they recently published Bodily Harm, a guidebook for healing self-injurers. We don't look at this as a disease. We don't look at this as something that's lifelong. We look at it as a behavior, and behaviors can be uh, treated and stopped. The first step in the SAFE program is stopping the mutilation behavior. Patients sign an agreement promising not to injure themselves during their 30-day session. They also get individual and group therapy. They're taught to deal with their emotions with a pen and paper rather than a knife and razor blade. The scarring is permanent. So as they become more healthy, that's something that they're going to have to uh, live with, be reminded of. And it's very painful and very hard for people. The treatment is working. Kelly Trock hasn't cut or burned herself in eight months, but says the scars in her arms actually help her deal with her tormented past. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's a nice reminder that, of where I've come from. So part of me wants to cry and part of me wants to rejoice that it's not going on anymore. According to statistics, about 3 million Americans suffer from the disorder. If you'd like more information on SAFE, call their 24-hour information line at 1-800-DON'T-CUT. Here's this weekend's extra snapshot quiz. Recognize this baby face? Here's a hint. Today, he's one of America's most respected TV journalists, and this weekend, he turned 67. We'll have more clues coming up in the Extra Snapshot. This looks left to the right. It's a pass to Brooklyn. Yeah. Touchdown! I'm going to call Pete! Hey, make sure you dial 10, 10, 3, 2, 1 first. Why? Because it saves me moolah. Really? Yeah, and it's half price for all calls over 20 minutes. Half price? That's a lot. What about monthly fees? No fees, no hidden charges. Here, look how low my phone bill is. 
bomb. 10 10 3 2 1 does save a life. Don't bother calling. Why not? You just lost. Dial 10 10 3 2 1. Gone with the Wind. Winner of 10 Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Kiss me once. Loved by millions the world over. Gone with the Wind. The greatest film of all time. Now for sale on video at its lowest price ever. Now there's an easier way to cook up a really delicious dinner. Voila! New chicken voila. The seasoned grilled chicken breast is already in it. One skillet, ten minutes. Voila! It's new. It's chicken voila in the bird's eye section. Extra Online brings you the latest news, fashion, health and beauty, medical breakthroughs, extraordinary people and pop culture. Visit us on America Online and the web. Why do we feel safer with Jack Cotty as our sheriff? Jack Cotty assigned a record number of deputies on neighborhood patrol. Jack Cotty put hundreds of our school kids through day camps and school programs for at-risk youth. He cut crime 19% and stopped convicts from stealing nearly a million dollars in Social Security from seniors. Safer neighborhoods, safer school kids, and safer senior citizens. Sheriff Jack Cotty, we're safer on his watch. One question I get a lot is about this up here. Is it real? And looking at some of the old advertising, I can see why you'd wonder. Well, it's real. Just like when I say we carry suits by many of the same designers as department stores, but for 20 to 30% less, that's real too. As real as, well, you know what. The Men's Warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. 1-800-776-SUIT. Hi, I'm Steve Boyer. As I traveled Indiana, I see a lot of progress and a lot of promise. I fought to return more of Indiana's gas tax money, which means the Hoosier Heartland Corridor connecting Fort Wayne to Lafayette will be built. We have a new 100-bed veterans hospital being built at the Marion VA, and we're finally cleaning up the Continental Steel Superfund site in Kokomo. There's still work to be done, but together, we're making progress. Steve Boyer, good for us, good for Indiana. There is just something about firemen. Maybe it's those uniforms or their everyday heroics that we find so attractive. But even out of uniform, these guys are hot. From dangerous disasters to dramatic rescues, this is the life of a firefighter. Now, meet the men behind the flames. The new 1999 Los Angeles Firefighters calendar shows off some of the hottest men in uniform. I made the month of February. 28-year-old Brad Evans may have extinguished thousands of flames, but his pearly white smile has set millions of hearts afire. Even Dad thinks so. He got all the looks and I got all the brains. But seriously, Brad says fighting fires is his passion. This makes me feel good to be able to represent the, uh, the fire department and, and what we do. Twin brothers Brent and Brian Crosby are December's men. They do everything together, so it's no surprise they both became firemen. But when the smoke finally settles, these 20-something Californians hit the beach. For these brothers, a strong body and healthy mind are all part of the job. A lot of the calls we go on requires strength. I think it's a must to be in shape. Mr. January, 33-year-old Arlen Cahan, works out daily at the firehouse, and it shows. But those bulging biceps aren't just for show. We followed him to a fire where he put those big muscles to work hauling hoses. This is it. That's what it's all about. But uh, it's kind of why we do the weightlifting. Get ready for the next one. They're not professional models, but in most people's minds, these guys are role models. I guess in the public's eye, we are hero heroes every day, but uh, to us, this is, uh, this is our job. This is what we do for a living, and uh, we all enjoy it. Here's another clue in this weekend's Extra Snapshot Quiz. This future broadcaster was recently appointed to one of TV's most popular news programs. It will be his second stint on the show. Can you name him? We'll expose this extra snapshot next. G49. Brothers and sisters, the great peril is upon us. Sling 
Bingo! A contagious combination of slot machines and our beloved Bingo! Bingo! Yes! Bingo! It's filled with wild jokers and nasty point stealers. It's way beyond five in a row! It's Slingo! Fill the entire game and pile up the points with Slingo. The amazing slots and bingo combo from Tiger. <laughs> Would you like to lower your monthly payments? Then you'll want to hear this. Now you can save money every month with the new Ultimate Win25 Refi. Refinance, consolidate bills, and improve your home. All in one loan. No equity required. Find out how much you can save each month. Call First Plus at 1-800-510-PLUS. It's no secret why Jibbenine sausage tastes great. Authentic, whole ground spices. Not oils or extracts. And it's a taste that you can only get with Jimmy Dean. Only the best. That's the Jimmy Dean way. Russell Stover introduces Looney Tunes treats. What? Snack size candy bars, Whoa. peanuts and nougat, or crispies and caramel, ah. covered in milk chocolate, yeah. surrounded by Looney Tunes stars. Yeah. Get Russell Stover Looney Tunes treats. A world of fun in every bite. Ooh. Web TV is so easy, anyone can use it. Let's say you're an awards judge for daytime television. With Web TV, you can look up a website and watch television at the same time. And since you're so busy with your judging duties, Web TV can even remind you to watch a show like this one. Not that you're forgetful or anything. Web TV service, the internet, television, and more. The more we get to know Paul Helmke, the more we're impressed. The Indianapolis Star endorsed Helmke because he offers fresh ideas, a populist approach, and much-needed local perspective. Political courage, adds the Journal Gazette. Few would enter the U.S. Senate better prepared to lead. I've worked hard, I've delivered, I've shown that uh, I'm willing to take the slings and arrows to accomplish things for the people of our, our state. Send Dick Luger a Republican partner. Helmke for Senate. Here's this weekend's extra snapshot answer. This baby face grew up to be the anchor of the CBS Evening News and was recently named correspondent on the new edition of 60 Minutes. He's Dan Rather, and this weekend he turns 67. Happy birthday, Dan. That's an extra snapshot. That is it for this weekend edition of Extra. We leave you now with more from the 19th annual Exotic Erotic Ball in San Francisco. Hope to see you back here for the next Extra.